that's uh that's me trying to pull a Sean. Uh, Sean likes to start every episode with a weird sound effect for no reason, no reason at all. But uh, he's not here. He's on a cruise. So you just get me. I'm Caitlin Cook doing the introductions. Welcome to 2020. This is the first episode of 2020. Happy New Year. And this is Five Words, the podcast. That's what you're listening to. And I hope you know that because you clicked on us. And thank you for that. This is Five Words, the podcast. If you haven't listened before, this is the podcast where me and Sean, Sean Patton, my co-host, we have on a guest. They're going to tell us a really awesome, sad or weird or crazy story. But before they tell us that story, we say, wait, 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 tell us five keywords from that story. And they'll hit us with some words. And then we will try and tell them what we think the story is based on those words and what we know about them. And then we nail it, totally, totally nail it. And then they hit us with the real story. And if you have a more concise summary of what we do on this podcast, let me know. It's uh, very long-winded. Anyway, I'm so excited to share this particular episode with you guys. Monroe Martin III has been a good friend of ours for a long time. He's one of those people that you see immediately across a room because he's very tall. But also, like, he's one of those people that when you see him, you know, oh, it's going to be a good night because Monroe is here. He's great. He's a great hugger. He's a very, very funny comedian. And this particular episode, like we had talked before about sort of his childhood and growing up in foster care in Philly and all that, but we really delve into it in this episode. It's such a good, intriguing, interesting, hilarious episode. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. And you should also check out Monroe in general. His website is MonroeMartinComedy.com. His Instagram is Monroe Martin III, Monroe Martin III. And he doesn't have any dates posted right now, but go check out his Fallon set. Go check out his stuff on Comedy Central and just follow him because he's going to let you know where he is. And he's so good. Seriously, go check him out. Okay, that's it for me. Enjoy the episode. Bye bye. Boo! Kachonk! And we're live. And we are live, not only on the podcast, but in real life. True. We are live with our wonderful, um, he hails from Philadelphia, Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. He (laughs) now lives in Queens, New York. Mm -hmm. The one, the only. (laughs) Ah. Pound for bound, (laughs) the tallest comedian in comedy. (laughs) Oh, Gary Goldman. He's taller than me. Okay, okay. Second tallest comedian. Second tallest comedian. Thank you. Monroe Martin the third. Yes, I am here. Thank I want, you, I yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to give you like NFL style t- statistics. So it's like <laughs> tallest comedian to hail from Philadelphia under the age of thirty-five. <laughs> yes. Monroe Martin, <laughs> absolutely, hell yeah. It's you ever, you ever watch? Are you, are you an NFL guy? Not really. Only during the season. And I, I only watch the season just to see who will win. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I like. Probably. I. I. I enjoy it, but I. I watch a lot of football, and my, one of my favorite fucking things. I guess every sport probably does this, is how they just create statistics yeah. constantly, constantly. Caitlin's yeah. a huge sports fan, as you can see by mm-hmm. the my the glazed yeah. look in my eyes. Yeah. I felt like they did that <laughs> uh, with hip hop. Like Eminem is one of my favorite rappers. But I'm like, he's only... Oh, I'm sorry. No, you keep talking. Keep talking. Uh, I'm like, he's only great because they created all these benchmarks that never existed yes. in rap before. They're like, he has the highest vocabulary in rap. I was like, but what about... That never existed before yeah. him. Like, nobody was talking about that. Right, right. right. Nobody was using multi... Well, I mean, dude, I feel like he... Because uh... you got like... Oh, go ahead. No, but I feel like he like... Yeah, he... It's almost like he... I, I feel like I wonder if it's more to do with Eminem or the time that he emerged because it was like, hey, if you're gonna be like a white rapper, yeah, you better do, you gotta do something. No, I feel like it's gotten worse now. Like with, you think? with statistics of um, oh, stati- I thought you were talking about hip hop. Yeah. Like, no, oh no, 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 <laughs> no. Right yeah. here. no, just like I feel like because there's so many people trying to do whatever it is now yeah. that they're creating statistics for like the first person from this place of this age to do this thing. Absolutely. And you're like, all right, well. The Eminem thing, there were so many rappers that rapped like Eminem, but they were black and it was corny. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you had Sticky Fingers, 
who raps just like like the same kind of content. Yeah, where it's like I I rip your dick off and feed it to my pigeon or some shit like that. Like they do that type of yeah, sticky fingers. Yeah, yeah. You had like all of D twelve. D twelve. You had Hobson. You had can. What's his name? Cannabis. Is it cannabis? The guy, the guy, the guy White Clough, White Clough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that guy, I feel bad. He said some wild shit. Yeah, but I feel, I feel like he was like supposed to be the guy. Absolutely. And then all of a sudden, it was just like cannabis. You mean the thing we smoke? Yeah, like, absolutely. About. That was LL Cool J. He came at LL, right? right. And LL smacked mm-hmm. that hiney up. Yeah. And then it was like, okay. And keep then moving. And then wait, what though? Like handed it was like White Clough's gonna produce your album. No, that was why Clef was the person that found him. Okay, okay. So all of this was happening while Y Clef was like bigging him up. Like, yeah, we're going to do an album. He's the next mm-hmm. to blow. Right. And then you come at LL, or uh, he said he never came <laughs> at LL, but LL interpreted it as a diss. So oh, he that, okay. responded and <laughs> destroyed him. And then I think that's what happened. Yeah. Whenever I hear about Y Clef, I think about a moment where like, I was trying to get more into hip hop because I didn't grow up with it in the same way a lot of people or a lot of men did, I guess. Yeah. Um, and I remember some guy was flirting with, I think I was like in sixth or seventh grade. Some guy I was flirting with was like, t- like tell me the names of your favorite like hip hop rapper guys. And I was like, you know, Wyclef Jean. I just <laughs> completely mispronounced Wyclef it. Jean. And he was like, I think he just stared at me and walked away. That's so funny. I, I like that. Like, I like that. And I was deep shame, deep <laughs> shame, like, so embarrassed. Wyclef Jeans? Yeah. yeah. Wait, was he also in seventh grade? Or yeah. was this like an older, no, no, yo, what's no, your no, favorite no. hip hop act? Yeah, like, no, what's up? Like, what you like listening to him on Buick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. one of those moments where you just like pretend you've seen a movie in conversation, and then someone's like, oh, oh yeah, that scene, what you think there? And you're like, oh, I don't know. No, yeah, I get yeah, that. Yeah. I used to do that shit. Yeah. I used to only see the trailer and like put the movie together in my head. I'm like, I've seen that shit. The plot, the, <laughs> when he jumped from the building onto the plane, that was the best part of the movie. Yeah. You know what? You, you know what? You know what the fun part to do? there is when you realize someone has not seen the movie but is just saying they are and you start implanting like man how about that twist huh (laughs) like did you did you did you realize it was all a dream sequence (laughs) did you know that from the beginning no i'm like yeah man the whole the whole uh wolf of wall street the guy was just dreaming because you're not <laughs> doing anything. And when they're well, like, yeah, I know, insane, end. right? It was <laughs> actually Inception part two. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was a, crazy. <laughs> but like, that's, I like, there you go. I cough directly into I the covered the microphone and <laughs> coughed directly into it. Um, yeah, I like, I think that's fucking hilarious. I also just, I'm enamored with the idea that another seventh grader was like, you can't pronounce Jean. Oh, huh. yeah. Yeah. Huh. I thought it was Gene, too. Yeah, yeah right? I'm not I didn't French. even know what he was it? Haitian. I didn't know he yeah. was Haitian. Did you know he was Haitian? I knew he was. I thought, yeah, I knew he was Haitian. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah. I, I knew. I, but I, I wonder if he thought it was White Clef Jean until white white people started white being Clef like, it's G- it's White Clef Jean. Jean. You're he was like, is it? Your own <laughs> <day>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought it was White Chief. Yeah, that White Chief <laughs> Jean. Uh, yeah, that's 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 that is like a. Well, we were talking before the podcast about like. Dealing with audience, yeah, like oh, yeah. Philadelphia is, and I don't think it is so. I I love doing shows in Philly. It's one of my favorite cities to perform in. But like Philadelphia is notorious for being like rough. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, like like they like, don't give a fuck in yeah. Philly. Everybody thinks they could do what you do. Yeah, yeah. at least four times better. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah, or yeah. at least they're going. I know someone who can do what you do. So. To them, they're ready to go. They're yeah. like, why are you up here? What's so yeah. special about you? Especially if you're from there, mm-hmm. then they will think that until you prove yourself. But if you're not from there, I think it's a little bit more leeway because sure, they're like, sure. well, we showed up to see you, so what's up? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah, we'll give you something. Yeah. We'll give you a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. But they also showed up with someone who they think is funnier than you. Right, right, right. They Did you got start performing buddy. there? Yeah, that's where I'm from. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Philly and Boston have that same, like, aggro, like, it's competitive. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. I've only been to Boston twice, but not enough to be like, oh, I've seen the scene. Yeah. But I've always heard, like, those are the, like, Boston people are, like, they're, they're aggressive. Yeah. They're very, like, yeah, what's up? It's like it's like if if uh, if the cities on the northeast coast 
we're siblings. Damn. It's like Philly and Boston are like the older, like we, we started this and mm-hmm. New York is it's like mega successful younger sibling. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, there's no you without us. And New York's like, okay, y'all, like, I yeah, understand. Yeah. Yeah. But the, because like, I, cause I, cause I, I like, it, it feels like Philadelphia has, it's a feisty city because of that. Yeah. Because mm. it's, it's, because it's so proximity wise too. It's only an hour away or yeah. an hour and a half away from New York. But it's also yeah. like, it's not too far from DC. No. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? DC mm-hmm. is known for being smart. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? That's it's, where all the intellectuals yeah. go and live it's and stuff. Cap- nation's capital. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Even though it's like, with the declaration was signed here. Yeah. <laughs> it happened here first. You moved down <laughs> south because you like the weather. Yep. You know? And this Philly, we just right here, just angry. Yeah. But I like, I think like, I love going to Philly because it's like that old, like there's, there are neighborhoods in Philly and I don't, I apologize, I do not know what they're called, but they, the streets are not wide enough for modern vehicles. Oh, it depends on where you are. So yeah. you're probably thinking about what, like South Philly? It's like near, South- near like where Helium is. Like there's like neighborhoods where like oh, yeah. you yeah. can't drive a car down those streets. So, so that's Center City and then yeah. it'll send down to like uh, South Philly and the streets do get narrow and people start parking on the sidewalk. Yeah, that yeah. you're talking about. I mean, where like they're yeah, like funny. up on their porch and shit. Mm. That's so, <laughs> is that because of how old it is? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's like it wouldn't make sense for them to tear down houses to make the streets wider because yeah. that's yeah. what has to happen. Yeah, those streets are two way. Just so you know, like those small streets are two way fucking streets. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. No. When that's I so funny, I I knew a. a a gentleman named Mike Drucker, who wrote for Fallon. Mm-hmm. I know. I think I met Mike Drucker like once or twice. Yeah, Mike's a fantastic yeah. comedian. Yeah, he um, he uh, he's from Jersey. Mm-hmm. I know Jersey and Philly got a a constant like. It's or it seems that way. It sounds. It seems like Jersey. People, I don't know. Like no? we accept Jersey comics accept Jersey? pretty. Yeah, yeah, we accept them. We're like because Derek's from Jersey. What's the sh- mm. What's the yeah. city across the river from Philly that? That's Camden. Camden. But that's, Cam- that's still Jersey, but yeah. like, they're so close that we're like, yo, you're from Philly. Yeah. But yeah. when they go, but when they start that corny shit, like, go, <laughs> like, no, there's corny shit that I just can't pinpoint, but it's just like a cornballness where you like, nah, take that Jersey shit back uh, across okay. the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like when they start being somewhat yeah. happy or like you're not from here anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> J- and at, at Jersey, and sibling wise, Jersey's like the adopted. Sibling that's yeah. that's also like you know I am part of this too and like, yep. shut up Jersey it's like beat it it's on like, both ends <clears throat> on the part of Jersey that's close to Philly and the part of Jersey that's close to New York yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. and even though you go to like you go to like North, certain parts of New Jersey and you're like this is the most beautiful place I've ever been yeah. oh my god yeah. you're like oh oh I'm sorry Jersey you are majestic and they keep that shit right yeah. in the middle yeah it's yeah. right in the middle mm-hmm. that central Jersey. That's like, you're like, wow, this is beautiful. And then everything else is like, bleh. I don't know if I've ever been to that part of Jersey. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I but don't know. I've just seen the shitty parts of Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> There's beautiful parts of Jersey. But like the, um, it should just be the sixth borough at this point, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, you know what I mean? Like Because like both of the New York football teams, speaking of football earlier, mm-hmm. play yeah, in New Jersey. Yes. I did not know they that. They don't set foot in New York City. None mm-hmm. of the, not, I guarantee... There are players that play for the New York Jets and the New York Giants who don't ever set foot in the state of New York because yeah. they play yeah. practice in New Jersey and they all live mm-hmm. in New Jersey. In New Jersey, yeah. Yeah. in like f- mansions in New Jersey. Why yeah. doesn't New Jersey revolt and be like, "You're our teams now"? Because they can't I, afford it. Uh, that would be kind yeah. of fucking hilarious yeah. if they took two NFL teams hostage. <laughs> like we I are gonna be the New Jersey Giants, <laughs> <laughs> and we you can have the Jets. <laughs> I felt like the Jets should have just been given New Jersey, though. Just here, take just the New like, Jersey here, Jets. Here you go. Thanks, thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. And then they give them less games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you guys only have to play ten games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds. It rolls off the tongue. The New Jersey Jets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I it would like be it. fucking hilarious if New Jersey took both teams hostage and then made this New York City choose one, like Sophie's Choice. Like you can only keep one. Who do you think they would choose? Jet Giants. Yeah. I don't. I've fan. I've only met three Jets fan, or fans in my entire life, and they all have. They all seem to be like, kind of, you know. Yeah. Are they all from New Jersey? I mean, they're loyal because yeah, of their yeah. grandfather or some shit like that. I think it's funny with all because every New York has two of every 
sports team. Uh-huh. And I just like the idea of when you choose, you go with like, I'm going to go Mets, Jets, and Nets because they rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Red Bulls because I like the drink. <laughs> and the other guys will fine, I'll go Giants, Yankees, Knicks, and football club because that's the other <laughs> soccer team MLS like that team that's what accent. it's called I think it's it's either it's either it's either NY New York FC or maybe it's just New yeah the other team doesn't have like because that the other is the, the, the MLS team the New York Red Bulls yeah is because Red Bulls owns sponsors. them basically sponsors okay. them but like which is so lame sorry MLS fans but that's fucking lame yeah that stinks like let them like let them wear Red Bull on the jersey but like Come yeah. up with a or name. at least give him Red Bull, like during like the yeah yeah, yeah. just yeah. give away <laughs> free Red Bull. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, the other team is just like I think it's FC New York, NY, yeah. FC oh, NYC. Weird. So it's like football club. Which one is better? I think the Red Bulls are like better. I think oh. they're like more stout. The other one's new. Yeah, okay. But yeah, they just New York's so massive. It's like well, if we're gonna get one, we gotta get two. Yeah. It's, I f- it's like an obese city that when it goes to order lunch, it's like just get two, get two <laughs> po boys. Just get yeah, get the one with <laughs> and without. We'll take one to go. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. One is always soggy. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> shitty. Yeah. Oh, it warm it up a, in the microwave later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 That's one, what the Jets one, are. That's what the Jets. But probably at this point, the Knicks. Ooh, people are gonna come at me for that one. But um, I've you learned. Think, oh, you think the Knicks will be better than? You would think the Knicks would be the best basketball team on earth. They have the most be- money. Because they've right? got money. They've got just so much, like, it's, it's the New York Knickerbockers. Yeah. You know, like, they've Spike Lee's there, you know. Yeah. Michael Che. che, che. <laughs> There's so much, like, yeah. Che in a hoodie looking at his phone, <laughs> but courtside. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, you're that bad. <laughs> yeah. You're going to go courtside to look on Instagram? Just to look up the, what is that, the Nets? Yeah, see what they're up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would think the Knicks would be like Laker level good, but yeah. I don't know. Because I've had, because I've had people like other comedians here. Like Sam Morrill is a big, yeah. is a huge Knicks fan. Yeah, and he's tried to, he's actively tried to recruit me. Really? Like what few, was his pitch? Just being like, come on, man, you live in New York. They're like the classic New York team. Because I jokingly was like, well, I live in Brooklyn, so I guess I should be a Nets fan. He's like, no, no, no. But you, you live in New York. Yeah. Brooklyn's part of New York. Why do you want to? And I'm like, he made a lot of sense. That yeah. is, he tried yeah. to pitch me on like, you it'll need be to New cheer York's for the, team. Yeah, he's like, it's New York's team versus just Brooklyn. Yeah. Is that what you're gonna do? You're gonna be a separatist? Just like um, the name Knickerbocker. Is that like an old Carnegie Rockefeller? I thought type Knickerbocker name, were a, pants. Yeah, I thought that's what yeah. I thought too. Yeah. So like wait, is the team slang. named after pants? I, maybe. I mean, <laughs> the, maybe New, the New York pants. If it, if <laughs> the it's New pants. York chinos. <laughs> Yeah, the yes. New York flat front khakis. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's true though, because I think then it became like a slang term for the kinds of upper class people that would wear that type of pants, uh, right? I mean, yeah. yes, and it's an it was an old name. And think about it, back then sports teams just named like they didn't know a lot. So like I don't know the White Sox. Yeah, they had the White Sox and the Red Sox. The, what, the yeah. Squires, remember that? Yeah. What is a Squire? It's it's a knight in training. Damn, yeah. you were that bad? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're you're just, a knight they in training. Like, yeah, like, you're not even a knight. Good. Yeah. You're a squire. It's like yeah. a knight's servant who's working his way. It's like a knight's intern uh-huh. who's working his way up to be the knight. <laughs> who, wait, who, who are the squires? I think it was like, hold on, can I look it up? Yeah, yeah look it up. Right. I just like, like the idea of like every team having to somewhat represent what they were named after. I'm so like the Knickerbockers wearing those pants. Yeah. S-Q- squires. S-Q-U-I-R-E. Oh, yeah, you know. No, I mean, there's Knickerbocker, a- there's times, Knickerbocker no. Avenue, but that's in, Bo- like, yeah. I don't, in Bo- Brooklyn. Yeah. And yeah, like they don't, they ob- I wish they would commit to the full name. I wish the Knickerbocker, the Knicks were the Knickerbockers. I agree. But I feel I like, I'm but, gonna but look I feel like the hard R. Virginia Nick- Squires. The Virginia Squires. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the- Virginia is a squire of a state. It's not quite a, not, <laughs> I'm just kidding, Virginia. We love your cigarettes. <laughs> um but, Wait, hold on. But, the term Knickerbockers traces its origin to the Dutch settlers who came to the New World. Specifically, it refers to a style of pants the settlers wore, pants uh-huh. rolled up just below the knee. Okay. That's funny. So that so means like, look love, at your Knickerbockers, yo. I would yeah. love to watch them play basketball in like little rolled up pants. Uh-huh. <laughs> the Knickerbockers. <laughs> I mean, if we're being, and, and honestly, they probably shortened it to Knicks because that hard R starting with the yeah. N. Yeah. Gives, Knicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives too many people, gives too many like shitheads uh-huh. an opportunity. Uh-huh. 
the Knickerbockers. <laughs> More like, you're like, all right, man, fuck, cut that guy off. Just call him the Nick. Like, call him the Knicks. Yeah, that's the. Um, well, no, okay, Philly. Yes. Mike Druck, that's what it was all. Mike Drucker, what he told me when he worked for Fallon that, like, the Roots, they used to get, they all apparently live, still live in Philly. They're from Philly. And they yeah. get picked up every day in a limo bus, driven to 30 Rock. They do the show, hang out, and then the, 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 the bus, limo bus drives them back to Philadelphia every day. I mean, I mean that, that doesn't I seem outlandish at all. I mean, that makes sense, but yeah. I don't know if that's the case now, just because I've seen, like, I follow yeah. Quest Love. Yeah, he, he's, he, he's and he, like, lives in, like, a high rise in New York, because yeah. yeah. you'll see him, like, just, like, like live streaming from his crib, and you'll just be like, God damn, that's dope. That's that would, cool. But I think, like, like Black they Thought were, lives, yeah. Yeah, 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 like, probably still lives in Philly. Probably, they, well, yeah. they're making money now, but I knew, like, it took them, a, like, I was reading Quest Love's book, and it said, like, that even though they were popular, it took them a while to really, really make a lot of money. Mm. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah. I remember listening to The Roots, like, 1996. Mm-hmm. And then, then like, the, the album, Illidel Half-Life, came out, which yeah. is, like, one of my favorite fucking albums of the 90s, yeah. arguably. And so many... It, it, it was such a hard thing for people to grasp that they were a band. Yeah. That it was, like, they're a hip-hop band. I remember, like... Talking like other kids in Slidell, Louisiana. And, and they're like, like what? So wait, they play their own instruments? Like, yeah, they're a band, yeah. but they're a rap group. It's like, but they're a, but they play instruments. That's so it, weird. It, it, but they play instruments. That's yeah. what makes yeah. them so dope, yeah. though. Yeah. 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 They're like yeah. great. Yeah. And like, yeah. he should be classified as one of the greatest rappers out mm-hmm. right now. Black Thought? You know? Yeah. Absolutely, dude. But Absolutely. I don't know what the argument is. Most people just go, ah, but he don't count because it's the roots. I'm like, he's still rapping. Yeah, are you listening? He's still weird. saying those words. What's the first album? We Want More? Yeah. That, yeah, that do one Do You Want like, More? Yeah. Yeah, Do You Want More? That yeah. one, like, he, yeah. Like, if he anything, can, that yeah. makes him a better <clears throat> musician overall because he's... Otherwise, it's just a producer and someone's rapping over a track. Like, yeah, he's playing along. It made, yeah. yeah, they had Scott Storch was a part of um, yeah. the Roots. You know, who Scott Storch is. I do. Yeah, yeah. There was well, there's that there's that that hit by the Roots, the 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 one with Erica Badu. That you got, got me. me. Somebody yeah. told me that this planet <laughs> yeah, was small. Yeah. He's like, that's my yeah. shit right there. Right. But <laughs> I just that, got really excited because that's gonna be the clip that I put out <laughs> on Instagram. Well, please. <laughs> that 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 but his uh, his like vert his it's a beautiful tale yeah. of a modern romance yeah. fall apart, how things fall apart because people have shit to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's absolutely. a beautiful like that song should be bronze. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's a beautiful like. That's my wife's favorite song. Is She's, it amazing? Yeah, yeah, she goes. That's my favorite song ever. She's like, if I ever die, just play that. She's she studying two songs, film I play and photo flash, film. focus, yeah. record. Like yeah, it's, just, um, <laughs> it's so like it's such a beautiful tale. Yeah, and then it's all of a sudden like. And also, it's him talking about meeting a girl at a rap show in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, the most yeah. ballish shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't go, yeah, yeah, I met her on Broad Street. Yeah, like, no, nah, no, I met her in Paris, yeah, we baby. were performing in Paris. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she, she didn't even know what the hell I was saying, and she connected. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, they're, they're yeah, I love... I, 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 no, but, they're great. They got, they got hits, man. But you, I wish, I do wish they would be like, all right, we are retiring from NBC and going back... Into but, the studio, but I mean, they I guess still do. Some, but no, they, they still make yeah. music. They they st- definitely still make music. They did. They made like albums. Like Black Thought had two albums, like last year, part one and part two. He teamed up with two different producers. I think Knife Wonder was like the last one or the first one, and then I think he used Premiere or maybe Knife Wonder again. Mm. But yeah. um, you know they were fun, fire. Dude. When I okay, so I did I did Fallon fucking years ago when yeah. it was still late night with Jimmy Fallon. Mm-hmm. But I was like, can I talk to Black Thought? Yeah, and I, and I was like, I'm not gonna like talk to him. I just like I have a thing I want to reference. Like you yeah. know, Black Thought knows, and they were like, who? What? Tariq and I Tariq, yeah. and they were like, oh, you have to call him Tariq, and I was like, yeah. but. But I get it. Really? Why would you have you to call him Tariq? Because Jimmy, they were like Jimmy's audience knows him as Tariq. But like, now they but call the him root, Black Thought now. The Roots yeah. fans know him as Black Thought. Yeah. And, but they were like, 
I was like, he I calls him Tariq Black Thought now. The yeah. full, yeah, like the full, yeah. 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 But they were like, no, nah, you have to say Tariq, which I did. I was like, you know, I, I was talking about a girl. I, my, I had a whole bit about how the, I met my girlfriend. She went to Temple. Yeah. And she was kind of rugged. I was like, which is Tariq will tell you, Temple's in a, not the best neighborhood. Yeah. I think I like that was something like that. And he like nodded yeah. along. I was like, yep. Yep. And uh, uh-huh. I think he said that. I think he said, yep. Yep. <laughs> I was like, fuck, it would have been so much more fun if I could like, Black Thought, right? Yeah. <laughs> Temple, that's a wonderful neighborhood to meet. A, but it was then how she didn't actually exist, and I had made her up. But uh, <laughs> it was good. a good bit. But um, yeah, it was so like, no, you have to call him Tariq. Oh, it was just such a moment. Like, oh. But Black Thought, like, I get yeah. it. Calling somebody by their rap name is so much more fun than calling him Mr. Like, whatever Snoop yeah. Dogg's real name is, I don't yeah. want to know. I want to call him Mr. Snoop. I believe I it's him. Calvin. Yeah, it's like <laughs> Calvin, Calvin something. Yeah, I'm going to look it up. Well, it's like when I was talking about um, watching Of Mikes and Men. Have you seen that yeah. yet? Of Mice and Men? Yeah, yeah. Of Mikes and Men. The, uh, no. Uh, it's, it's like the four-part Wu-Tang documentary. Where, where is that? Uh, Amazon. Oh, okay. I got to watch fantastic. it. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But no, like, it's on Hulu, right? No, the Hulu is the uh, show. The show, that shit is uh, fire. Yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, but like, Are you, you're I mean, not it done. Is Calvin, I binge watched it. Shit, out. Calvin what? Calvin Cordazar Brodus Jr. Brodus Jr. Doesn't flow out your mouth no, like it Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Calvin Cordazar Brodus Jr. I don't know. It's a well, mouthful. That was like oh. I I was talking to my friend Brian Brian Cook, fellow comedian, writes for Kimmel, but he wrote on. That drop, drop the, mic. the mic show. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and we were ta- was talking. About yeah, this. we were talking about uh, that documentary. Yeah. And I was like, it's kind of crazy just to like hear Method Man like talk about how he was because he was the most successful, but yeah. how he was intimidated by all of them. Oh right? yeah. And Brian Brian was like, oh, uh, and then he said he said Method Man's real name, and I was yeah. like, oh, that's right. You like you were in a writer's him. room with him. Oh shit! Like working on yeah. jokes and shit. What's Method Man's real name? Uh, it's, like, it's uh, no. Uh, it better it up start up with an but M. I thought I thought Eliza said that she called him Meth. Or oh M. no, he goes by Meth. Is it yeah. really Meth the Cow? Yeah, yeah, his real name is his middle name is Tacal. Tacal. Meth the Cow. It's Clifford M. Clifford. M. Smith Clifford. Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Clifford. I love it. I mean, Clifford Adam Smith Jr. now would yeah. be a yeah. good hip hop name. Yeah, yeah. True. Cliff Jr. Cliff Jr. Yeah, some fucks with Cliff because Jr. because the guy who plays. Uh, Method Man in the Wu-Tang Dave East. Show. Yeah. Dave East. Yeah. That's his rapper name. It's yeah. his real name. I, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's a dope ass name. Dave yeah. East. Yeah. yeah. He's, hey, yeah. Dave East, if you're listening, I think you actually knock it out of the park with Method Man. Oh, he kills that shit. As does yeah. the actor whose name I cannot remember. You were in the Get Down, which was a great show for season one, god awful for season two. Uh, the dude who plays. Shamir? The guy who plays Raquan. Shamir. Raquan. Yeah. yeah. That guy is nailing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he's nailing Raekwon in you like. You see his interview? He interviewed and he asked him how he got Raekwon down. And he goes, oh, I don't even know. Like, he, cause he, <laughs> he was just like, I don't even know. He was like, Raekwon is just there on the set with me. Yeah. He goes, Nah, say it like this. I don't act like that. And he'll <laughs> just, All right. And he'll just, he goes, I talk like him and I just do this and I move my mouth and this, that, and the third. Yeah. You see him like transform. Wow. Like, this dude really an Raekwon, actor. Raekwon might be my favorite, personal yeah. favorite of the Wu-Tang. Really? Ray, yeah, just because like his Only Built for Cuban Links is a fantastic album. And I never really gave it a shot. Yeah, it's a great yeah. album. And also he's just like, you know, Outkast, my, I think, is arguably my favorite hip-hop group of all time. And he is on a track on Equemini. Yeah. And it's great. Okay. It's like hearing him over like Southern 808 beat. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yeah. Okay. Well, that song's not really 808, but um, I like I fucking know what I'm talking about. Cipher. Why what? wouldn't you know what you're talking about? You're listening. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I feel like sometimes I just don't. I oh. like conflate shit. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave this to a quick shout out. Fact checker of the Five Words podcast, Jeremy John Neese, chef extraordinaire, New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, <laughs> is is. The song Old School Players and New School Fools. I can't remember what the actual song's called, but that's the chorus. I don't remember Ray yeah. Kwan being on, on, on that. Old he's on School it. Players and New, new School, School Fools. Yeah, he's on that. Uh, he's, he, he opens it. He's the really? opening wow. verse. Is that beat 808, Jeremy Johnny's Fact check. Yeah. Um, but isn't the 8... So 808 is just more of the bass I thought it was line. just bassier boom, and quicker. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. yeah. It's like a muffled bass. I just know that from, whatchamacallit, from 808 to Heartbreaks, because the whole album is boom, 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 boom. It's 
like shit like that. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I would yeah. think it was a time signature thing. 808. Probably yeah. is, but sure. it has yeah. specifically to do with bass. Yeah. Yeah. Time signature. You would be like that nerdy mm-hmm. the person <laughs> who could, who it's could a time get time signature. But would get behind a beat machine and yeah. like make the greatest beats anyone's ever heard. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, who makes these beats? A Jewish girl <laughs> from LA. <laughs> she don't even know who Wyclef Jean is. I know, right? Yeah. He's my favorite member of the Wu Tang clan, right? <laughs> <laughs> she makes all right wait so wait where are we at hold on let me look at the oh yeah we should drop in to the yeah why no I just you're giving me more edit things to edit out that's all uh, it's fine that's alright Monroe will What's you up? tell us your story in your five words hell yeah this yeah read yeah. them so out with this, this? yeah just read yeah. them out yeah okay WWE mm-hmm. wall Kermit police arm cool so it's WWE Wall Kermit Kermit Police, police arm. arm. Okay, so this is what we think your story is. WWE, as everyone knows, is uh, internet community shorthand for we watch everything. Mm-hmm. It's a community yep. of people around the world who just love watching pretty much anything. Yeah, so, ASMR shit. Right. Everything. Yeah, just people doing weird, random shit. Right. And so one night, you go home after doing some shows. You're a little high. You got a bunch of bodega food with you. And you're like, mm-hmm. you know what? I'm just going to film myself eating all this garbage, yeah. all this junk food. People will watch it somewhere. And Well, you weren't really expecting people to watch it. You were like, this is funny. I'm high. And, uh, and so you post this video on your Facebook wall. And uh, you wake up in the morning, and there are millions of views. And millions. It's gone viral. Right. And you get contacted by yes. a dude named Kermit, mm-hmm. right? Who, like, you know, this was back when you could, can you, I don't even know if you can still do this anymore, but like if you can, like, Facebook call people. Oh, yeah, yeah. you can still do that. He calls, <laughs> okay, so he calls you. He's like, yo, what's up? It's me, Kermit. He even sounded like Kermit the yeah. Frog. He's like, <laughs> listen, these videos are going huge, man. You want to make some actual money? You send me more videos of yourself eating and just doing ed- anything you want, and I will, will get paid. You want to get paid? And you were like, I'm not going to turn down money to just do anything and film it. Yeah. And I, Kermit's my fence now. Yeah. So you start doing that. You start just sending Kermit videos of you doing pretty much everything, eating, yeah. sleeping, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, opening the fridge, deciding not to eat, shutting yeah. the fridge, you know. Yeah, just general stuff like that. Great Kermit uh, accent right there. It was like 50% Kermit and yeah. 50% I have no idea why. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, we're in and out. <laughs> it went in and out of like Kermit, Kermit and then the dude from like oh, Stranger no. Things, the cop. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. It, was yeah. A- it was Kermit plus... Uh, but it wasn't uh, actually the fuck is Kermit the Frog. That's right. I, yes, I think yes, it was, true. Oh, it was okay. a guy who kind of sounded like Kermit. Yeah. Anyway, then you get contacted by the police. Uh, it turns out some of these videos that Kermit is sending are illegal. Right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. Which you did not realize. And you were like, I didn't realize it was illegal to just send videos of doing anything. And they're like, it is. And we are a special task force mm-hmm. of the police called ARM, the- which, as everyone knows, stands for and- American... Yep. Relegation mm, uh, management. Management. Yeah. Re- Ameri- American <laughs> relegation management. They just yeah. make sure we as Americans don't just send videos or whatever. Send videos yeah. of us doing whatever to the rest of the world because I could see how that could be used as torture in third world countries. Like, yeah. hey kids, look what look in America, you could just do this. Yeah. yeah. Anything. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, so that's when you decided, you know what? I gotta make better content. Mm. I gotta focus my content. And that's when you started the podcast with Derek. Damn. <laughs> And that is the origin story of your podcast with Derek. So that that is actually <laughs> accurate. I don't know how the fuck y'all got that. I was like, I'm sitting here like, yo, that's exactly yeah. what is it? Yeah. Fucking arm, me. man. They scoop me up. Arm. Arm. They scoop. That's what they call it. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. That's why it's called arm. So just to recap, it's about the time you started selling videos of you doing anything under yes. the hashtag WWE, which stands for We Watch Everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got contacted by an illegal fence named Kermit. Yes. You start sending him videos. The police contacted you, yeah. uh, specifically a specialized task force called ARM, mm-hmm. which stands for American Relegation Management. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Fucking nailed it. Now, uh, <laughs> no. how off it. were we? Yeah, what's, <laughs> what's tell the us real the real story. story. I thought you actually knew this because I thought you heard me try to work this story out before. No, oh, no. no. Oh, okay, so dope. That was great. That was, uh, <laughs> way off. 
Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. so the story is actually about the first time I ever got to spend the night over uh, one of my best friend's houses growing up. Okay. And I broke my foster dad's arm. <gasps> what? So let's start there. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like a, a long jump. Yes. We were how the yeah, fuck? It's a journey. So it was the there. I'm a huge fan of wrestling, mm-hmm. even more when I was younger. Right. And my friend Kerm, we call him Kerm because he looks like Kermit the Frog. Mm-hmm. And like everybody called him Kerm. Like, like his mom. Look, when like, you say he looks like Kermit the Frog, though, it's just like a frog face. Or? Yeah, like a very frog face. But like if you like look at him, you go. Yo, you look like Kermit. That's like so everybody funny. said it. Everybody yeah. like it was like a nickname that even if they didn't know you, like in the hood, like if you walk down the wrong block, people like people go, oh, they're gonna rob you. you know, sometimes they'll just make fun of you until you get yeah. out of the box. So like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? They're gonna rob you. They'll take your dignity. Yeah, they're gonna rob you of your dignity. So we'll be walking to the store and they'll be like, hey, don't this nigga look like Kerm? Don't he look like Kermit the Frog? Oh. And they'll say shit like that. Yeah. So his name was Kerm. And we were like huge fans of wrestling, and we his grandmother agreed to allow to allow me to spend the night on Saturday so we can watch the pay per view, so we can like watch a pay, like mm-hmm. like watch the pay per view on Sunday and just like make like a whole day of it. And that was a big thing for me because when you're in foster care, you can't spend the night over people's houses. It's like a it's illegal mm-hmm. oh, because I didn't know that. you're yeah you're you're the state's property. Oh so, right. Oh, if man, you're, okay. if like, if anything happens, like they can do surprise pop up visits, like they can come to your house where I live and go, where's Monroe? And they go, oh, he's at his friend. They can go to jail for a long period of time. Wow. Right? So yeah. it's like a really, really, really big deal. And I was happy to like do that. And a little backstory about my foster dad, he's like a, he was like an old man who like really, really wanted to be a cop, but I guess he even never tried or tried and just didn't make it past the mm-hmm. academy. So he was like the leader yeah. of the town watch. But he was the oh, leader. Oh, yeah. He's a leader because no one else was a part of the town watch. Right. It was like me and him, and it's me because I like couldn't be left alone by yeah. myself. So I would like go and like walk with him, and he would just like like be like this tough guy, but he wasn't. He was like he was like at least like. Five eight, really skinny. <laughs> yeah, like really yeah. like little and frail and you skinny. You were already six foot two. <laughs> yeah, it's like we were the same height already. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. yeah. So uh I get to spend the night over Kerm's house, and it's me, Kerm, his little brother, and like we're just all excited. This is uh I think this is Saturday night. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're all like really excited that we get to watch wrestling tomorrow. So we're like just watching tapes of old wrestling shit, Mm -hmm. like talking about what's going on. Then we start wrestling and Kerm throws his little brother through a wall. Like fucking just like by mistake. It wasn't even like, it wasn't like a purposeful thing. It was like a... You call a guy a frog enough, he's going to get hot. True, true. (laughs) He's just got all this rage strength. He's like, get the... He's like, boom. (laughs) Sorry, I mean, Jack, Jeff, what's your name? We don't know your real name. He threw his brother through a wall. He threw his brother through a wall, but it was like a sheetrock wall. So you know how like thin those are. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's still like... it. Looks cool as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> that looks cool as shit. Like yeah, I don't care yeah. what nobody say. Like you fucking throw somebody through a wall. You're like, yo, he's strong oh as shit. God. Like both the person who throws the person and the person who goes through the wall. Yeah, both, both look- of you look cool. <laughs> yeah. you both come out cool as fuck. Like even though it was a mistake, it's like, yeah, y'all are dope as shit. Yeah. Grandmother comes in. She's she's like angry. She's like everybody. She's like y'all. Y'all got to go to y'all room. Y'all are in bed for the rest of the night, for the rest of the fucking weekend. Monroe, you have to go home. And like, they were like, yo, but he didn't do it. It wasn't his fault. Like, we were playing around. So they like, they they stuck up for me. So she was like, I don't like, she's still nice about it because she liked me. She was more like, I get it. But it happened because y'all were playing. Mm -hmm. And she's also got that like, the foster kid. He's a yeah. foster kid. Yeah. You're bad by nature. So she's like, you yeah. got to go. So she uh, calls up my foster dad who's like, want to hear like what happened. And she's like, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. She comes, like he comes up and he comes in like real aggressive and he's like, 
grabbing me like by like the back of my shirt and shit. Like and, even uh, though you're the same si- height, yeah, like he don't care. Like he's grabbing me. He's like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" He like pins me up against a wall. Like grabs me by my like neck and shirt and shit, and like pushes me up against a wall. And then like something in me just like fucking snaps. And I just like grab his hand and I twist it as much as I can. And then that shit just like kind of pops out of the socket. So now the cops come, oh a social worker God. comes, and it's just like this commotion. Wait, how old are you? I was going to, I was graduating out of middle school. Okay. So like like literally, 12. yeah, I'm like 12, okay, 13. Yeah, 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in eighth grade, about to start. Yeah, 13, uh, I'm 14. literally starting uh, ninth grade. That, like it's the summertime. Yeah, it's like the last okay. couple of days of the school year going into the summertime. Right, and like the cops come, like they can't arrest me because they're like, "Well, he's too like he, it wasn't his fault." Plus, he's a ward of the court, so like if anything, he will come with us before he goes with the cops. Right, all that shit, and it was just like I felt bad. Right. You know, but then I felt great at the same fucking time. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> like I did. Like I felt bad, and I was like, I don't know what's going to happen to me. Like yeah. this is going to be terrible. Like I'm like thinking the worst. Like I'm never going to be able to live in another house again. But then, like as I'm calming down, I'm like, yeah, fuck him. Yeah, yeah. Don't fuck yeah. with me. I'll break your. Own. Like I'm yeah. like getting cocky now. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I'm crying and shit. There's part of you that's like, it doesn't matter what happens next. I can handle it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, like what? You, you can throw anything at me, life. I'm gonna break it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just put your hands on me, life. See what happens. He and he even went as far to like try to sue me and what? Like, and they were like and tried to sue your tried foster's to, kid. Yeah. Tried to like press that's charges he, and that, stuff. That's why he didn't become a cop. Yeah. Because he was a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like he really did. Like it was like weird where it was like uh like even the family that I was with, there was like but it was his fault, like, because yeah. the grandmother even said it was like he put his hands on him. Yeah. And, like, even yeah. though I kind of was just like, because the guy's a girl, I'm like, get the fuck off me. Get the fuck off me. Mm-hmm. So I'm, like, being disrespectful and cursing and shit. Right. But she was like, he put his hands on him and the second and the third. So they kind of just was like, what? That's stupid. And then just threw it out of court. Okay. Yeah. That's, I want, that's, yeah. that's fucking hilarious if you find out, like, on the Philadelphia police exam, one of the questions is, if you are ever fostering a youth and they are not immediately obedient and uh, physically harm you, what is your action? And yeah. it's like, A, deal with it. You're uh, fucking, you, you've chosen this. Yeah. Now, B, uh, you know, uh, get well and then explain to them how they were wrong. Yeah. Or C, sue. <laughs> <laughs> he chose C. And that's why he's like, I'm wrong. Su- yeah. That's the wrong answer. <laughs> he showed up in the court with like a sling on and shit. I felt so, I was oh, scared. Fuck that. I was so scared, that sucks. man. That sucks. I was fucking yeah. terrified. And it was like weird, like, because I seen them, I remember this day. I remember, I like, I think, it was like a couple years later, and I'm like walking downtown Philadelphia. I think I'm on my way to like a, a job interview or some shit, and I had to see him. And then he just like gives me that mean look, like "fuck you." Yeah, yeah. and we just but keep then, walking. But then, if like, you look yeah. back at him even harder, he'd been like, he'd back "Yeah, away. probably." Yeah. But I was like goofy look. <sighs> That's like, that walking. is such a like show. Like that. Okay, because like there's there's this whole. Uh, conversation today about how people are too sensitive yeah and a lot of people you know a lot of people will sort of like parade their pain out for like it's sympathy yeah and a lot of people are like where did that come from and it's like i think it kind of sparred from like lawsuit culture yeah of like the idea of like you got to show up at because we like tell you tell kids it's okay to ham up your bullshit yeah to win a case and that like that gets planted in there somehow yeah and then when you're like 25 and you're like but i didn't understand that (laughs) if i didn't go to class i wouldn't graduate college (laughs) and now here i am and i owe all this debt it's like oh you know what? It's the school's fault for not properly making them understand that they had to pass these courses. Yeah. You know, that's it's like absolutely right. And like, but that that's crazy, dude. That's a movie. Yeah. 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 That's like a, I've been trying to like write it yeah. out, like on. I I, I thought you heard me say it on stage. De- I'm never. That's definitely a story you got. I'm tell trying to like just find more beats and like things to tell within it. Because yeah. it was the second time I ever had to fight a foster dad. 
Yeah, really? I was gonna ask. Did yeah. you stay with that? No, dad? I went to I went to another home. They literally took me out of that home and they placed me in like a temporary home for a little bit. Um, where'd I go? I think I either hold on, I gotta remember. In between this place, that was I can't say their name. Well, I can, but you'll but yeah, it out right. Yeah. Yeah. I went from the and I think from the. We got to bleep out that specific name. I went to, yeah. <laughs> no, but they know. I think they know. The I, yeah. Yeah. There. I think they know. I think. And there was like one in between that, but then the next one was I was living with like a, a, a family. There was a, a, a father and his kid and then his wife, and they were having another kid or whatever. And like I was already at that age where I'm like, you can't yell at me now. Like yeah. you, you're like, if you're gonna talk to me, yeah, talk, talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. But the moment you raise your voice, I'm raising my voice. Yeah. And they didn't like mm-hmm. that shit. And like this dude fucking hated my guts. And like he used to have just like cousin of his that used to come over and they um and like like they would just like talk shit. They'd be like, Yeah, what do you think you too big to get dealt with or whatever? Like they hung me over a banister one time because yeah. I was like, I was like about to go off. Right, but this is what happened. So they locked me out of the house. I remember. I think I was in like tenth grade, and they locked me out of the house because uh, we had moved to another crib. We had moved from one place, one area to like the suburbs. So it was an accidental. No, it was on purpose. Oh, they locked. Okay. Yeah, because they used to give me bogus ass curfews. Like you gotta have, you gotta be in the house at nine. But I'm like, it's the summertime, and I'm like at yeah. least fourteen. I'm at yeah. least like fifteen, sixteen. Like yeah. you're not. Yeah. Telling me I gotta be in a house and of course, at if nine. you're like, like bounced around a bunch of places, you're like, you have no authority over yeah, me. Yeah. So I, I really like thought they were like suckers about this shit. I show up, um, all the lights are on. And I like ring the doorbell and then I just slowly watch all the lights go off. Like the light wow. like in the living room goes off, the light in the kitchen goes off, right? And then it's just they're upstairs and then the light in so the master bedroom goes like off. A, like yeah. they just was like, yo, I told you what we told yeah. you. Boom. So this is where I kind of fuck up. And I admit this shit. Like I told my wife just her and she was like, yeah, you're a fucking asshole for this shit. I was like angry and I threw a temper tantrum because I like knocked on the front door. I would knock on the side windows. I would knock on the back door. Nobody answered. And I sat out there for at least, I would say I sat out there for at least like a fucking hour, right? I'm sitting there. They got like a out, like above ground swimming pool. And I'm just like chilling on the lawn furniture in the back. And then something in me just like, I'm like, Fuck this shit. So I like throw the chair down. I break the chair. And then I kick the side of our pool. But I kick the fucking like the 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 pump oh, that yeah. goes no. from the ground into the pool. Right. I kick that out. All that water fucking just starts no. coming out and just fucking pouring out to the yard oh, and shit. shit. So I fucking just leave. I like walk. I just like fucking like speed walk and then run down the block. And I thought I got like so far. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like. I'm on Rising Sun Avenue, which is at least like seven, ten blocks away from where I'm, uh, I live. Right, yeah. right. And like streets are dark. And I just remember like they pull up like in a minivan and they pull up in the out of the van and they jump out and they didn't and like I'm fighting them. Like they fucking fight really? me. Jesus. Yeah, like for real. How like many? They got, it was two. But two grown ass men. Okay, yeah, like, yeah. Grown, the dad and grown. his cousin. The gr- dad and yeah. his cousin. Oh, right, like, right. And we're like, they fucking like, I'm throwing punches, they throwing punches. But when like that many people are hitting you, you don't feel it. And you got oh, yeah. like yeah. adrenaline. Yeah. And yeah. you're like just fucking, yeah. Wait, and what so wait, wait. You're just fighting just in the middle fighting, of the night. Just fighting and like I I throw a punch that lands, but they throw one, like the cousin throw one, fucking lands, knocks yeah. you down, they jump in the car, fucking leave. Oh, and they just, just they just get out and, and they just fucking, fucking beat your ass. Yeah, and, and they just get back in the car oh, and fucking no. leave. <laughs> this, this is what this is for. This is comedy. Like you think they're coming to be like, Monroe, Monroe Martin. No, you come back fucking, here and answer for what you did. They're like, dude, no, we're gonna fuck this dude up. Yo, they're like, we're about to fuck this dude up. What? <laughs> Why did they even take you in? My, yeah, they, because they, people do it for the money. money a lot. Yeah, like people do that shit oh, for the money. The money like, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. it's good enough if you don't. Yeah. This is what it is. It's good enough if you don't have 
any drive to do anything else with your right, life. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like some people will go, oh, you know, I care about the kids and I believe those people exist. I've lived with some of those people mm-hmm. no. who didn't give a fuck about the money. They put their own money into me yeah. and they put their time and all that shit. But then you got people who are just like, you can see their lifestyle and you can go, all right, well, your job doesn't pay you that much and your job doesn't pay you that much. Right, so right. you're taking the stipend that they give you because they give you the money yeah. to kind of go, well, this is how much this kid would cost. Like, this is how much right. food it costs. This is how much school clothes cost, all that shit. So they would give them the money. But this family, they would just go like to the flea market and buy me like used clothes and all yeah, that shit. Yeah. So like I live with a lot of those people too. So a lot of people did it for the money. Yeah. And when I realized that, like I would say I was like, like I was like two different people. Like if you were cool, I was cool mm-hmm. and like I could be lovable. But if you were like a dick and I was very like, I hated authority. Teenager. So the yeah. moment yeah. you were like, but the thing is you don't get to be a teenager when you're like, Living under someone else's roof. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Like, if it's your yeah. parents, you can go through your teenage phase. You can be rebellious. But when they're like, I, you're not mine. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. They don't understand that shit. Yeah. They don't understand you're just going through your, like, phases in life. So, I love the yeah. Idea. I love the idea that this dad and this cousin adopt foster kids because they're trying to both train to be MMA fighters. True. And, like, let's get some troublesome larger kids. Yeah. They'll do something wrong. We can fight them. <laughs> We can, yeah. That's how we'll train. That's how we'll be ready for anything. <laughs> and they saw you, you and they're like, oh, he's going to grow up to be big. Oh, we're going to get him. We'll That's lock him out one night. He'll yep. do something. Dude. I mean, I, I, like, I, I, can see, I can see your wife's point. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. But also, like, I can see your point where it's like, they're fucking, the whole, like, passive aggressive, like, yeah. the, like, instead, open door, where the fuck were you? I yeah. would rather I that. be yeah. here an hour ago. You're spending the night outside. Bam. Yeah. Then it's like, all right. Yeah. But, like, yeah. instead... <clears throat> nope, just shut the lights yep, off. Shut the, the lights off. And and I know because yeah. he was that he was that guy. Like he was that guy who was petty because he did petty shit in front of me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. About you know what I mean? To yeah. like his family and shit. Yeah. So like he was real, he was real petty. So Yeah. yeah. When I was doing Teach for America in Chicago, there were like a lot of little little poor little babies in the foster care system, like yeah. five. When did you get put in the foster care system? I think I went in around like six, seven. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so similar. Yeah. yeah. When, when, and you're turned loose at 18, basically. Uh, no? I I stayed in until 21. Until 21? Yeah. yeah. So I did SIL, which is called Supervised Independent Living. And I did that because I got in a fight with my stepdad. Your real, you're like my mom. So your real mother's, my real mother's husband. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, because my mom got her shit together very, very briefly. There was like a time where it was like I think like at least max five years, just like right. killing it. Like she got herself <laughs> clean. Right. Mm. She <clears throat> got like. Uh, some sort of nursing job. Clean, where was she, she like, like an alcoholic or a uh, drug addict and alcoholic? Okay, just so she got her. Yeah, she got herself clean. She oh. wouldn't even fucking drink. She uh, got. I think she was like an orderly. She would like work with older people. So mm-hmm. she had some nice money coming in. He worked for the city, and they were happy together. You right. can see that shit. And he, <clears throat> but like there was like an incident that happened because like. I, I was very conscious growing up. Like, right. I don't know what... I think just the environment I grew up made me go, okay, you got to start, like, thinking for yourself right. a lot mm-hmm. more because you're just being pushed down this this path anyway, regardless of what you do. Yeah. If your behavior is good or bad, they're still going to, like, just keep pushing yeah. you along the system. So I remember seeing my mom and getting her life together. My sister moves in first. My other sister moves in. But they, like, are arguing and stuff like that. And it made sense to me why they would argue. Because I'm like, they don't know you as a mom. They don't know you as, like... Are they younger sisters? Yeah, Uh, they know you, but they don't know you as, like... An authority figure because right. your word doesn't mean shit. Yeah. Because no matter what you tell me, the people I have to listen to are the people in this group home, the mm-hmm. people in this foster home. Like, right. you got to listen to these people in the foster yeah. home. So how are you going to tell me what to do? So they would, like, challenge her authority all the time. Right. And I didn't want to do that to my mom because I knew I would be like, well, I don't know you. Right. I would have a respect for you, but I don't respect you like a parent. Right. Like, that, that emotion is gone. Right. Yeah. So... Yeah. I like I had that 
feeling in me. And then uh, my sister had like a like a friend over, and they were like hanging out. And I left the house just to go like I think I was hanging out with at the time. I think I was hanging out with like my homies Jared, and this is like Jared Lamont and all them, and they live like. If this this is Brooklyn, they will live like in Harlem. Okay. So okay. I would have to go that far to yeah. go hang out with them. So I came back and I guess like I know they didn't do anything right. because my sister isn't really an aggressive person. Like she is, but like she doesn't play aggressive. Mm-hmm. Like she's real chill. But he claimed that the door to the basement was broke and he said that I did it. Right? Mm-hmm. Like not even asking him. Just like you broke the fucking door. Right. Yada yada yada. And I straight up was like, who the fuck are you talking to? I didn't break no fucking door. Mm-hmm. And he fucking like big as shit. He was like my Oof. size now. Right. He right. fucking like grabbed me by my throat and just like slammed me against the door, right? No. And I'm like grabbing his hand, like like squeezing it and like trying to fucking like like bend his shit back. And my sister just comes up right behind him with a fucking knife to his throat. <gasps> what? Yeah, she just fucking Holy puts shit. that knife to his throat. Versace. And she's like, she's get she's like, now. get the fuck off him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and like, but from that moment, I was like, I can't live here. Like, this isn't like this wouldn't be. And they lived like smack dab in the hood. Mm-hmm. Like okay. they lived like <clears throat> there's an area called Tasker Projects was like the probably the one of our last worst projects in Philadelphia. Right. And at the time, it was still up. It was called Tasker Homes. Mm-hmm. So it was like that's going on. Then you got the Tasker. Like, Tasker Projects literally on the next block, so it just wasn't, like, a good environment to Mm -hmm. be in. Right, right. So I just chose to stay in foster care, and then they gave me the option to live by myself. But it really wasn't by yourself. Like, they would still, they can, you had to follow a set of rules. You got your own apartment. foster care kids, No, you get your own apartment like this. Like, for real. Like, you get a nice apartment, but. Is it paid for by the state kind of thing? Yeah. And you, like, have roommates? Nope. No? No roommates. Just you by yourself. Uh, there's other there's other foster kids in different apartments, but the rule oh. is no overnight guests. Like the moment you have an overnight guest, you are kicked out. They so, don't. Yeah. Okay, so it's like dorms almost. No, like no. real apartment built. They just oh, like, just they take over so time. You, yeah. okay, okay. So you got Section Eight. <clears throat> right. So yeah. they they mm-hmm. I don't think they did a Section Eight thing, but they would do a Section Eight does like right. buy a certain amount of apartments in certain buildings mm-hmm. and like pay the rent on that. Right. And do all those things. So you had to maintain a job. You had to keep a certain amount of money in your bank account. You had to go to school. You had to be in some sort of post-secondary education. You had to go to these mandatory meetings that happen uh, like once or twice a week. If you had people, if you missed those meetings, you had to have a really, really good excuse. Like you had to like... You had to call out of work to go to those meetings. So it wasn't mm-hmm. even like a meeting where you'd be like, yeah, like I, I'm at work. They're like, we don't give a fuck about your job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you got to yeah. have one, yeah. but we don't yeah. care about it. So <laughs> yeah. they were like strict in that sense. So I did that. This and was I lived at 18, different. right? Yeah, yeah, this was from like 19 actually to 21. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when you're 21, yeah. you're set free. Then you're 21. They're like, all right, you can start paying for this apartment by yourself or you can move out and go buy another apartment or go find another place. Mm-hmm. And I didn't save a single fucking dime yeah, yeah, yeah. when I was living there. Yeah. shit. So I, when it came time to like transfer the lease, I didn't build my credit up. I didn't have no money, any of that shit. shit. So yeah, I yeah. went and I, then I found like roommate situation and shit. And then, yeah. oh wait, is that, and then, and then you started doing stand up. I started doing stand up at 22. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. after, wow, that's fucking yeah. insane. Well, first of all, a few questions. One, are you still close with that sister? Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, ask. me and that's my yeah, that's my yeah. homie. I mean, that's my put, homie. She, yeah. She fucking drew, is she still drew in a Philly? Sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she still. That's my. I got two sisters. Yeah. Me and that. Me and we're still close. I think it's a, like we we've become different people because sure. she's a mother now. Sure. Mm. You know, so her mentality is different. Yeah. I'm a husband and a comic, so my world is completely different from right. her. Right, like, right. my thought process is different. Like, the way we think is completely yeah. different. Yeah. That's still my homie. Yeah. yeah. That's my homie. That's my... You can blank their names out if you want. But, but that's... Yeah. 
I, I love the idea. That is such a like. That's one of those movies. If this were, or one of those moments, like if this yeah. were like your life movie, yeah, and like the knife, that'd be like they probably just wrote that in there for dramatic effect. Uh, nope. No, no, yeah. no. That nope. actually, this also, happen. like the scene <laughs> yeah. of all of the lights shutting off in the house yep. slowly one by like one is like, yeah. oh, I was so fucking pissed because that's the second time. That's the first time, but it happened to me again. I was living with this lady named. Uh, you gonna blank? I can say our name. You, know, you can say whatever you want. Okay. You want us to I'll blank. remove whatever. Just blank the names yeah. out because I know these people still fought. Like they fought their kids and grandkids follow me on okay, social yeah, media. Yeah. I'll, like I'll, so, they'll be like, like, "Hey, how do you remember me?" And it's yeah. like, "Yeah, get the fuck out of here, block. <laughs> <laughs> you made it. I don't want nothing to do with you." <laughs> but this lady name was Miss. <laughs> she used to do that shit. Like I was a little older. You gotta watch out for it because the Miss. Another very specific. Yeah, <laughs> but she she saved my life one time, so okay. I, it's a, it, it balanced out. Right. Uh, she used to. She was like strict like that. She didn't fuck around. Like if you came home late, she had a back deck that was built that came out of like her kitchen area. Uh-huh. Right. And she she made her real kids sleep out there. She didn't wow. fuck around. Oh damn. She used to have these two. She used to have these uh, like two teenage daughters, and they were like they were cool shit, but like they like they would do, go and do their own thing and like they would come and like try to get in the house and she'd be like nope and she would tell us to get the fuck away from the door like if we go and unlock Shit. it she'd yeah. be like she'd be like get the fuck away from the door and we just gotta stare at him through the door like yeah. yeah I'm sorry so she did that to me I came home like late one time and I was never into like selling drugs and none of that shit. I wasn't into like <clears throat> I wasn't like a hood kid. Like I hung around that shit, mm-hmm. but not that deep. Right. So yeah. I didn't really. So I I I sold drugs for like a week in school. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I sold weed, and it didn't make no money because I was just giving it away to yeah, people. Yeah, you're like, what do you got? And I'll I was like, this, yeah. this is stupid. <laughs> so I was like, this is dumb. But she didn't know that shit. But um, people don't realize the actual like time and effort that goes into selling drugs. Dude, it's a business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't just start doing it and be yeah. rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when people go, yeah, it's easy money. Get the fuck out of no. here. It's the mo- It's like telemarketing. Yeah, it's yeah. more hours, no money for yeah. real. For real. Yeah. yeah, telemarketing. If the uh, if if the people you're Selling to over the phone, get addicted to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got more it. of those cut cold knives. <laughs> I need a warranty. <laughs> yeah. but Wait, man. so like when you started to do comedy, was that something that like you felt like humor was something you always you, you I were was, the funny guy or you I don't used to know t- why, but yeah. people considered me funny. I didn't consider myself funny, but like she she was one of the people who like we would like be sitting at the foot of her bed watching like Comic View or Comedy mm-hmm. Central, and she'd be like you can do that. I was oh, like, that's really? Cool. And she'd be like, yeah, yeah, I can see you doing that. Yeah. She was like, she keep, she would always say this to me. She'll be like, because she always, like, I would have, like, low self-esteem and all that shit. And she'd be like, you could, I see your face and your personality on TV. Wow. I don't know what else you're thinking about doing with your life, but I think that should be a part of it. Damn, and I would cool. be like, what? And I was just like, I didn't know what that meant. Right. But mm-hmm. she would be like, you can do that. You can be on TV. You can be funny like those guys. Yeah. And I would have her laughing, and I don't know how the fuck I have her. Like, she would be <laughs> like cackling. Yeah. And it was, she had like no teeth in her mouth. Because she'd be like, <laughs> Dude, good, yeah. that, that, uh, like oftentimes a sense of humor evolves as a defense mechanism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and then like it was, you know, when you weren't fighting dads. Yeah, you yeah. were you were <laughs> figuring out ways to like accept and deal with life. Yeah, so you made fun of it all. Yeah, yeah. And or all like people, diffuse the situation through humor a lot of the time. Yeah, like, I was just yeah. goofy. Like some people interpreted it as, "Oh, you funny," and then some people would be like, "You're fucking goofy. You're a distraction." And it's so weird <laughs> yeah. that the people, because I like. I had to interview like a lady for uh, like this foster care show that I'm trying to put together, mm-hmm. and like we were talking, and she was like, "Did anyone in care, like any one of your social workers, ever nurture this?" And I went, "Absolutely not." They yeah. actually yeah. were like, yeah. "Call me." Like I got kicked out of like, um, like after school like programs for mm-hmm. like foster kids because they would be like, "You're too distracted." But uh-huh. all I would do was just like make jokes and shit on people, right, and make right. fun of people. But I wasn't like. Starting fights with people and shit. Yeah. yeah. So it's like That's weird because there are the same people who call me when they like, oh, you're on Last Comic Standing. Can you come oh, do yeah, a yeah, show yeah, for yeah. me? Of course. Of course. Get the fuck out of yeah. here. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. 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 Well, I feel like uh, 
it's not a normal career path that a lot of people think of. And yeah. it's a very unstable career path. So Absolutely. if you're already going through foster care, that doesn't yeah. seem to be something that they would encourage you to do. But it's yeah. cool that it was, what, Miss that Miss that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, but this is how she saved my life. I got in trouble at school, right? I didn't really like fighting in high school. Like for Somehow I ended up just like getting through it. Right, yeah. like I didn't like. No one really had beef with me. I didn't have beef with anybody. But like people knew me enough to where they'd be like, "Oh, that's Monroe. He's fucking funny, but mm-hmm. like man, he he ain't shit." Yeah. So it wasn't yeah. like a dude where it's like, "Don't fuck with him." Like right. I never yeah, had yeah, that yeah, energy. Yeah, yeah. But I got in a fight with somebody in high school, and it wasn't even really like a fight. It was like a tussle more so. Like we're just fucking tussling, and there's a teacher who tried to break it up, and this lady is like, like. 411 oh, no. getting in between two kids so she like claims like we pushed her like mm. we pushed her it was just right. like no you you tried to move us yeah. and you just fucking couldn't do it yeah right. so like first i got like i got in trouble for like inciting a riot cuz that's what they said happened cuz it was in like of it was in an auditorium a two person riot a two person riot, a yeah. two yeah. Person yeah. riot. Yeah. Yeah. it was like yeah. you got in trouble for inciting a riot and i had a keychain that was like a swiss army knife thing but it didn't have the knife part it just had like oh, yeah. the fingernail oh, right. file yeah. and the scissors like it was like it was like 3 inches mm-hmm. right and they said that that was a weapon no. so they kicked me they like Took me out of school, took me down to a police station, and they were literally, they just got done fingerprinting me, right? They fucking fingerprint me. Miss her husband was a highly decorated uh, police, or just like a cop. I don't know like how high his like ranking was, Uh but he passed away. Right. And they just, that respect from him transferred to her. Mm -hmm. So she literally came in that station and was like, Get him out of that cell. Get his fucking prints out of the system. Right. Wow. Like he's already in foster care. And the moment you put him into the, you put him the into system like system. the yeah. system system, that's the end of his life. Mm-hmm. And they were like, we, we don't know what to do. We can't do that. Once he's in the system, he's in the system. She fucking took me to like this big ass like judicial building the mm-hmm. next day and like talked to like the judge for like 30 minutes and all my shit got a sponge. Wow. That's amazing. And, she, and yeah. she literally saved my life because most of the people I know who's in foster care have a record. Yeah. Even my sister has a fucking oh, record. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You have to have I a record mean, to she... know to grab a knife. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. My right. sister didn't fuck around. Yeah. Respect. My Respect. sister did not fuck around. I have a record. She punched me in the face yeah. one time. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's well, so that, like, <laughs> I, no. first, I got my first place. This is when I got the place in SIL, and she came and she's hanging out, and I'm like cocky. I'm yeah. like very like, get the what, Beatty, get the fuck out of here, this, that, and the third. And I like push her shoulder out of nowhere. She just fucking turns around, whop, and like right Damn. in the fucking nose. I'm like, and she's younger than me. That's, yeah, but she younger, younger, like, yeah. Boom, younger, younger like, sisters do the damage. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love the idea of while the they were talking, you're, they're Miss talking to the judge, they find out like, wait, is this the same Monroe Martin that broke the arm of that guy who kept trying to be a cop and we kept telling no? Yo. That guy? Yeah. Expunge yeah, 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 get, yeah, yeah. get this shit out of that's here. That's why. Oh, man. Dude, that's... that's Saved my life. That is yeah. fucking insane. That is such a, like, beautiful, like, origin story of yeah. Monroe Martin. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for allowing me to where, talk Like, now, it. where can people find you? Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all it's that at, stuff. It's at Monroe V. Martin, right? Or Monroe? No, Monroe Martin, I, I, I. I that's what it is, yeah. 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 And then I got a podcast called No Need for Apologies. Yeah, yeah. Me and Derek Gaines. Mm-hmm. Great podcast. Yeah, like, thank you. Thank and you. Yeah. Guys are, and you guys are like old friends, too. So they're yeah, like, they're that's, like a fun That's one energy. of my yeah. first comedy friends, and he's yeah. like a brother to me. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you yeah. got if you got and if you guys were like, uh, like a like a choir or like a group. Yeah. You're de- he's definitely you're the baritone and he's definitely the soprano. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. You guys, you yeah. guys, his energy just meshes. Dude, yeah, it's meshes perfectly. Great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, everyone. And you, you have like uh, website tour dates. Yeah, well, I'll have it. I'm still putting together some tour dates, but the website is MonroeMartinComedy.com. Yeah. And I'm have I'm gonna start to like release a bunch of stuff. I'm working on an hour. I'm working on like other fan- things in finally. between that. Yeah, yeah. You got the source material. Yeah. I think. But I'm like, yeah. dude. I, mean, I think you go through this, but it, it takes, takes a while, a while yeah. for you to like start speaking like I speak yeah. to you, like yeah. about these situations on mm-hmm. stage. 
and not run from mm. when people go, sure. oh, I'm like, oh, oh no, yeah. that's, I can get to the funny from there. The, yeah. be- the best so. dishes often take the longest to cook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a dish for the soul. Monroe oh, Martin. Shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's a that's nice way to dope. wrap it up. Monroe Martin, he's fought more dads than a guy who only dates single moms. It's true. Go see his comedy. He's one of my favorites. He's fantastic. Follow him on all the things. Do it. And thank you for sharing yes. all that. Thank that you. Awesome. Thank I appreciate you so much. it. Thank you for having me. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. A town called Bel Isabella.